Amelia doesn't understand Christmas, and it shows in her work. She cancels her beach vacation for the holidays to visit her Christmassy hometown, where she meets her childhood best friend, Mike. Amelia's assistant Carrie arranges for her trip to Turks and Caicos for Christmas. It's her tradition to sip cocktails on a warm beach. She doesn't care for the regular festivities. She invited her boyfriend Brad too, but he wanted to spend Christmas with his parents. She has still invited him for a Christmas dinner with her parents that night. Carrie points out there's nothing festive about whatever they have planned. Amelia is confident about her pitch because she designed Bill Burns's top-selling app. After a successful Closet Assist app, Amelia pitches Christmas Assist to Bill. She has designed it for people who want to escape the chaos of Christmas. With her app, people can access their loved one's shopping wish list in one place and buy it for them. Her algorithm also considers past purchases and sends a card. Bill is concerned this takes the thoughtfulness out of gifting and ruins the surprise. Amelia claims it will still help people avoid the chaos of stressing about buying something people like. Bill is sure the app is not capturing the Christmas spirit and rejects it. Amelia is offended that Bill feels she doesn't understand Christmas. She is proud of being born in a town called Christmas Creek. She explains to Carrie that she moved to San Francisco when she was 13, but is originally from the small town. But Amelia also knows the investors are right, and she should have given them what they wanted. Carrie knows Amelia is great with apps, and will figure something out. Brad is going to be late for dinner, but Amelia still heads home to start cooking. When they come over for dinner, Amelia's mother, Helena, is worried about the stress level of her husband Dan. Helena offers to help Amelia and takes over. Amelia feels she can't cook because they eat sandwiches for every meal. Helena knows Amelia can't cook because she is always focusing on her work. Dan is nervous because they received a letter from Hugh's family in this morning. It was forwarded from their San Francisco address to Chicago. Amelia is excited about hearing from her uncle Harry, but Dan feels it might be junk mail. Amelia explains why the investors didn't like her app and hopes the holiday inspires her. Helena asks her to stay with them, but Amelia knows Dan has interviews and they just moved into a new house. She knows they never do a family Christmas and asks Helena to focus on getting settled. Dan keeps staring at the letter and so Amelia opens it. She finds an invitation for the 40th anniversary of Fly by Santa at the inn. Brad turns up late for dinner when her parents have already left. He wants to discuss how his parents want to meet her. She never spends the holidays with families and thinks it's a stressful time. Brad feels one argument between her dad and uncle years ago shouldn't ruin Christmas forever. Brad also wants to spend more time with his parents as they get older. He breaks up with her because he can't deal with her refusing to spend Christmas with family. Amelia looks at the brochure for Fly by Santa again and decides to cancel her beach trip to go to Christmas Creek. She is eager to go back to her roots to understand Christmas more. She explains the tradition of Fly by Santa to Carrie, which Harry started 40 years ago. He collects toys for needy children in remote areas and delivers them through the plane. The brochure also has Amelia's photo as a child, since she was Harry's original co-pilot and Santa's helper. She decides to drive up to Christmas Creek. After entering the town, her GPS stops working. Mike comes to ask if she wants help. He knows about Hugh's family inn and asks her to follow him. He claims he does search and rescue for the area and would hate to pull her out of the ditch because she doesn't have winter tires. Harry doesn't recognize Amelia, but she feels he looks exactly the same. He feels shocked when he realizes who she is. And Amelia is also surprised to learn Mike is her childhood best friend. She explains that she drove by herself from Chicago for the 40th anniversary, and her parents don't know about this. Harry is glad she came there and hugs her. Mike is happy to see her too, and hopes they can catch up. Harry brings her inside, and she's impressed with how beautiful and busy the place looks. Harry is glad he has some returning guests. Nathan at the front desk feels bad all rooms are booked. Harry suggests she can stay at the cabin with him where she grew up. Amelia thinks the cabin looks the same. He doesn't have a Christmas tree because it's been very busy with the inn. Amelia misses their flights with her as his co-pilot. She's not sure if she remembers the controls and asks about Pamela. Amelia feels bad they broke up because she always thought they were the perfect couple. She explains that the brochure was mailed to her parents but knows Harry didn't send it. He claims he wanted her to come for the anniversary but didn't have her address. Amelia is glad to be back because she wants to see Harry. He asks her to get settled in her room, and she wakes up after a peaceful sleep. Harry has made her coffee, but has to rush back to the inn. Amelia plans to head to town that day and asks for directions. He asks her to take his truck because it's better for the winter roads. Amelia is fascinated by how Christmassy the town still is. 
She finds a little girl, Scout, manning a store, whose mom has gone to get something. Amelia remembers coming to this store when she was Scout's age for the best Christmas decorations. Scout is working on a school report for her hero and pilot, Amelia Earhart. She gets fascinated to learn Amelia's name, and they discuss how both their uncles love to fly. Scout explains that her uncle was in the Air Force, and her dad was a soldier. Amelia buys something, and Scout asks her to come for the gingerbread house building competition. Nathan has some ideas for the decorations at the inn, and wonders about his niece. Harry is excited to have her back, and remembers when she was his co-pilot. He finds out that Nathan sent the brochure to her parents, he compiled a list of all the guests in the last 40 years, and sent it to them. Harry feels it's fine, because Nathan is only doing his job well. Pamela comes out to meet Amelia after hearing from Mike that she's back. Pamela hasn't seen Harry around, and Amelia remembers him mentioning he's very busy. When Helena calls, Amelia claims she's on a last-minute trip to do research for the app. She's unable to start the truck, so Mike offers help. She explains that she came back to learn more about the Christmas spirit. He explains that his box is for the fly-by Santa delivery. He has been Harry's co-pilot for the last 16 years. Mike assures her that Harry understands she needs to leave with her family. Mike also understands that they were young and couldn't stay in touch after a point. Amelia asks about how Harry has been, but Mike feels like he has to give up a lot. Amelia feels like everyone in their family did, but she knows he's talking about Pamela. Amelia finds a lot of old photos of her as Harry's co-pilot in the cabin. Scout is Mike's niece, and wonders if Harry will ever let her be his co-pilot. Mike knows it's a lot of responsibility, but thinks she will be a great pilot. He can assure her that her dad will be back for Christmas, but he knows he will be there for her. Amelia climbs into the plane and starts remembering all the controls. Harry joins her and is impressed that she remembers everything. Amelia informs him about running into Pamela and wonders why they broke up. The summer after Christmas Amelia's family left, and Harry couldn't be there for Pamela on her birthday. They had plans, but he had to deal with an emergency at the inn. He knows he has been very busy and feels she made the right decision to leave him. He thinks Pamela deserves someone who will make time for her, but Amelia has noticed the same regret in her eyes. He asks if Amelia has someone special, and she explains what happened with Brad. Harry thinks if he was the right one, he would still be there. They both understand why she can't do big family Christmases, but he's glad to have her back. He takes her flying like the old times, and she feels proud of remembering all the controls. Harry loves flying because it gives him a new perspective. He thinks their problems are too small compared to the freedom in the sky. Harry finds Pamela struggling with some boxes and offers help. She mentions running into Amelia and thinks it must be strange to have her back. When Harry mentions he took her flying, Pamela knows she must have loved that. Pamela teases Harry for getting coffee from her competitor Phil. He tries to say something, but Pamela realizes her biscotti might burn in the oven. Scout is glad Amelia came for the gingerbread competition. She asks her to join her and Mike. Scout is excited they know each other and loves that they were best friends. Mike explains that their house will be judged at the tree lighting. Mike loves being an uncle and would do anything for Scout and his sister Elise. Amelia realizes the gift shop she visited was Elise's. He explains he doesn't have kids yet, because he hasn't found the right person. Amelia hopes to have kids someday, but admits she just got out of a relationship. She thinks it's weird being back in Christmas Creek. Scout is worried, because others are getting creative. Mike assures her they are ready to start building something great. Scout shows the house to Elise and hopes they win. She also shares that Amelia is helping them. Elise teases Mike about her and remembers he used to be obsessed with her. Mike remembers it as a minor crush, but Scout feels she's beautiful and cool. Mike insists she is fine and normal, but Elise doesn't think she's just a friend to Mike. Amelia finds Harry hanging Christmas stockings for the guests and staff. He wants to personalize gifts for all the return guests since they feel like family. Amelia knows this is the kind of thoughtful gesture, with an element of surprise, that her app investors wanted. She explains how they passed on her thoughtless app. Harry thinks everything doesn't go as planned sometimes for the better. She reminds him the cabin doesn't have a tree, so he asks for her help with that. When Mike comes to deliver some decorations Elise sent, Harry asks him to help Amelia with the tree. Amelia remembers the smell of fresh pine trees. She teases Mike about cutting his own tree as an outdoorsy rescue worker. He claims he's supporting local businesses. He remembers Amelia always picked out the skinniest tree in the lot to give it a chance at a happy Christmas. She finds one she likes, but Mike suggests a grander one. Amelia is glad Harry has still saved the macaroni angel she made in second grade. Carrie calls to remind Amelia about the app and asks if she should prepare a list of investors. Amelia asks her to stop working and be with her family. Carrie is surprised by how changed she is and hopes she has a great Christmas. Harry wants to buy them dinner, so Amelia takes them to Pamela's Italian diner. 
Mistletoe. Pamela is glad to see all of them and announces the specials. Amelia remembers the last time she was there when Dan let her order everything. Harry knows he was feeling guilty about them leaving then. Pamela takes over the piano and dedicates a song to Amelia. Harry leaves for a work emergency, but Amelia feels it must be overwhelming for him. They remember when Harry and Pamela used to sing on the piano together. Amelia is sure there's something still left between them. She feels weird how one moment can change everything. Mike explains that he also left town for flight school and working in the Air Force as a pilot. When his dad got sick, he wanted to be there in his final days and moved back home. Harry soon became the closest thing to a family apart from his sister. Elisa's husband, Will, is also away a lot because of his army duty. So Mike wants to stick around for her and Scout. He also thinks this town feels like family and he could never give back enough. Amelia forgot how clear the skies are in the town, so Mike brings a telescope. Harry lets him borrow it since the stars made him want to fly and led him to search and rescue. He's only scared about all the people he can't save. She thinks he's a great person, but he feels she is too. Amelia regrets giving up on all her childhood dreams to get into the tech world. Creating apps seemed the smartest thing to do because she wanted to bring convenience to people's lives. Mike feels they are both the same people they were growing up. Amelia remembers herself as a wide-eyed girl with a sense of wonder. Mike is sure that's still there and shows her the stars. As Amelia admires them, Mike throws a snowball at her. She gets into a fight with him and they both lie in the snow, holding hands. Amelia finds Harry looking at a photo of him with Dan and their dad. She remembers that her grandpa also used to fly. He was always surprised that Dan didn't like flying. Dan was always about the books and had a business instinct. He used to keep telling Harry to take things seriously while he kept greeting guests and being a Santa. Amelia remembers he was always like that, but Harry knows it's tough to run an inn that way. His life changed when her family left and he had to learn it the hard way. Amelia points out that his inn is successful and is sure her dad would be proud. Harry remembers they said a lot of things to each other that can't be taken back. When Dan got the offer to work at a big hotel and wanted to leave, Harry remembers he became very angry. It was right before Fly by Santa, and he was hurt. Harry knows he didn't deal with things properly, and regrets never reaching out to Amelia over the years. Harry asks her to meet him at the plane to decorate it like old times. When Mike describes his snowball fight with Amelia, Elise is glad he seems happy again. He keeps insisting they are just friends. Elise thinks he deserves love after all he does for people. She hands the phone to Scout when Will calls them. Scout has just wrapped his present, and he thanks Mike for taking care of his girls. Scout asks if he will be there for Christmas, and Will insists he's trying his best. He loses connection, and they hug Scout to make her feel better. Amelia is glad Harry still has the same plane after 40 years. He has always known that he loves flying, and it's a part of him. Amelia remembers wanting to help people when she was young. She is worried the investors might be right about her not understanding Christmas. Being with Mike and Harry these past few days has made her feel a lot better about Christmas, but she's also unsure about her next step. Harry feels the peace and quiet of the small town will help her out. He asks her to find what she loves and follow her heart. They are proud of the decorations, and Amelia hopes she's still his best co-pilot. Mike wants to claim the title too, so Harry asks them to figure this out. Mike asks if she's hungry, and they sit by the fire. She wonders what their lives would be like if she didn't move away. Mike joined the Air Force, but he always knew he would come back to raise a family. Amelia also wants to get married someday, but doesn't want to imagine a wedding with a family feud. She doesn't want her kids to grow up thinking families don't talk to each other. She feels her first step should be to admit to her parents that she's in town. Mike assures her it's fine for her to be there, and is glad she is. Mike feels like her coming back was meant to be, and it might help her family reconcile. She asks if he would go back in time and change the moment she left. Mike feels life is out of control, and they should feel grateful for moments like this. Amelia almost burns her mouth with the chestnut, so Mike tries to blow it. Nathan interrupts them because of a call from Scout, and they both laugh about it. Harry goes to see Pamela, and she offers him his usual drink. They blush in front of each other, and Harry remembers having great memories on the piano. She asks him to join her, and they sing together after a long time. Mike wakes Amelia up and asks for help in the lobby. He's already wrapping gifts for Fly by Santa. Amelia is excited about how happy the kids will be with the toys. He offers to buy her lunch, and Pamela is glad to see them. Amelia feels Pamela looks much happier than before. They discuss what to order and enjoy the wine. Mike doesn't cook much himself, and they both understand how lonely it can be. Mike asks her to be his date for the tree lighting that night, since he's officiating. Nathan hears Amelia's phone ringing and claims he's from Hugh's family inn. Since he can't find Amelia, he hands the phone to Harry. 
Mike asks Amelia to join him for the toy pickup the next day. Harry informs her about what happened with Nathan and the phone. Her parents had called and cut the phone when they heard Harry's voice. Amelia tries to call them back, but no one answers. Mike asks Amelia to calm down and not jump to conclusions. She snaps at him and doesn't know how she will explain the situation. He asks her to accompany him to the tree lighting, but she pushes him away to talk to Harry. Amelia and Harry don't know how Dan will respond to this. Amelia feels their whole family is stubborn, and she is also very rude to Mike. Amelia remembers Brad telling her that she pushes people away when she's upset. Harry thinks that's their family pattern, and his problems started because of that trait. She is worried about never being able to let people in. Harry assures her that he and Mike are there for her. He asks her to not let it ruin her night, and she heads over to join the festivities. Harry comes to meet Pamela with hot chocolate when she's closing up. He admits letting her go was one of his worst mistakes. He regrets not fighting for their relationship. Pamela finds it hard to trust him, and he understands that. But he believes all the conversations he has had with Amelia about family have made him change his perspective. He doesn't want to push her away anymore and doesn't blame her for giving up on him. He admits that she has always had his heart and kisses her. When things are sorted, he asks her to be his date at the town square. Mike is proud of calling Christmas Creek his home for 30 years. He lights the tree while Elise comes to hug Amelia and hand her a candle. She goes to check on Scout when Mike asks everyone to vote for the best gingerbread house. Amelia apologizes for pushing Mike away when he didn't deserve it. He claims he only said those things because he believes everything will work out for her. Amelia is worried about her parents, but he asks her to not lose hope. They're about to kiss, but Mike is called on the stage to announce the winner. It turns out to be Scout, and he promises he has nothing to do with this. Scout asks Elise to take a photo for Will, and Amelia is sure she will never forget Scout's face. Dan and Helena turn up at the inn for Christmas. Amelia brags to Nathan about apple cider being a huge family recipe. Dan compliments the inn, but Harry claims it's all booked out. Nathan informs them of a checkout that morning, and he has already put Dan and Helena upstairs. Amelia asks Nathan to put their room on her tab, but Dan feels too proud to let her pay. They all meet for dinner, and Helena has prepared extra to make up for all the Christmases they missed. Helena claims she has missed these large meals with her family the most. She toasts to family, and Mike thanks them for including him. Harry claims he has always been family, and was there for him. Dan thinks that's a taunt for him not being around. Harry doesn't deny that, which makes things more awkward. Dan explains that the inn was struggling, and he couldn't handle it himself. Harry claims he did all the work when their parents wanted them to run this together. Dan remembers they couldn't support two families, so he made the decision to leave. Harry taunts him for wanting to be the CFO of some company. Dan asks Amelia why she lied about coming there. Amelia explains that she knew Dan would be upset if she told him. She claims she has a right to come to her uncle Harry, since she doesn't want to be a part of their feud. She feels they all have each other, but still keep fighting like children. She walks off, and Mike follows her. Amelia starts packing and feels this is why she never celebrates Christmas. She knows she can never fix her family, and refuses to stay at Elise's place. Mike offers help, and remembers that she's not the person who walks away from her family. Amelia pushes him away again, and walks off. Helena and Dan decide to leave too, but Amelia is missing. Helena decides to check with Nathan for her, Dan is genuinely proud of what Harry has done with the inn. Harry explains that he's his own accountant because he had no other choice. Dan feels their parents would be proud of what he has done. Dan explains that they moved to Chicago when he lost his job in San Francisco. They replaced him with a young kid, and he didn't want to say anything to Harry after everything they went through. He tried to be there for his family, but admits he is jobless now. Amelia thanks Pamela for letting her stay the night. Pamela knows it's not easy to love the Hughes family, but asks her to be patient. She hands over some photos of the tree lighting to cheer her up. Amelia goes through them and calls Bill with her latest idea. She wants to make a charity app to ensure no one celebrates Christmas alone. She feels it should be about the greatest gift, which is about being present rather than material presents. Bill loves this idea and asks her to discuss the specifics after the holidays. Pamela asks Amelia to deliver some toys to Mike. She asks her to not make the mistake of shutting him out like she did with Harry. Amelia knows she's right and calls her mom to ask if they can all meet at the cabin. Amelia hangs some Christmas stockings to replicate the gesture Harry made with the inn. Dan is impressed that the cabin looks exactly the same. Amelia explains that she has seen the townspeople treat everyone like family. This has reminded her of the Christmas spirit again. She points out how it's all about who you decide to spend time with. She knows about people who have lost their families and are suffering. She feels they're lucky to have each other and should not fight like this. She knows Dan chose to leave because he thought it was best for his family. She also knows Harry handled the inn without anyone's help for the family. 
She feels both of them have sacrificed something, which makes them more similar than different. She asks them to not be so stubborn and wants them to have each other's backs. Dan and Harry hug, and Dan thanks her for bringing them together again. They both admit it was partly their fault. Harry offers Dan his old job back as the CFO of the inn, so they can work together like their parents wanted. Dan admits he really needed that, and already has a few suggestions. Amelia hands over the toys to Mike and apologizes. She knows he was right about her being the kind of person who never leaves her family. She knows her family will be fine, and wanted to tell him first. He has always been her best friend, but now she sees him as something more. She admits that she loves him and doesn't want to lose him again. He kisses her and claims he has been waiting 17 years to do that. Amelia informs him that Harry wants to take the day off, so they have to deliver the gifts. Scout gets excited when Will shows up for Christmas, and everyone loves their reunion. Mike informs Amelia that they have to make deliveries to two neighboring towns. She gives him a picture of them from the tree lighting. He gives her an angel ornament he meant to give her before she left all those years ago. Amelia wants him in her life and hopes they can figure out the long distance. He assures her he's not worried because he won't let her go after finding her again. Everyone cheers for the fly-by Santa plane in which Amelia and Mike disappear into the sky to deliver the gifts. 